We are at a quarter acre rooftop farm at Ryerson University in downtown Toronto. We produce 10,000 pounds of food each year that goes to the farmer's market and to our CSA customers and is distributed to the food room as well, which is where students can get food for free. When we started the farm, we weren't sure what we could grow on a roof, so we started by growing a little bit of everything and we found that there wasn't anything we couldn't grow. Corn, broccoli, potatoes, tomatoes, we tried it all and everything was gorgeous but we've moved toward crops that are higher value and that make more sense in a small, confined space. So we're trying to grow things that have um, a lot of different successions or a continual harvest. So we do tomatoes, uh, peas, beans, salad greens, radishes, carrots, beets. This green roof was built as part of the original infrastructure of the building in 2004 and it was planted with daylilies and it was left standing um, until 2013 when Ryerson's student-initiated garden group converted it into a farm. So the soil that was here when we arrived was actually really beautiful. It was a really lightweight um, engineered soil that was high in organic matter. One of the advantages of having a soil that is higher in organic matter is that it retains water really well. So we actually only water once a week and we, we use a drip tape, which is great because it reduces evaporation. So we turn on the drip tape once a week and we leave it on for 24 to 48 hours, which kind of mimics a, a heavy storm, which the plants love. And what we do is we check the weather. If there's a storm coming, we don't water. So that way we can make sure that we're catching the most amount of rainwater possible so that we're contributing to stormwater management. Water is a big part of green roof technology. So the professors who were instrumental in including a green roof on this building were actually instrumental in creating the City of Toronto's bylaw that all new buildings that are over a certain size have to include a green roof. This project began as a student initiative with the mission to grow food on campus and create opportunities for people to learn about how to grow food. Urban agriculture crosses over a number of different disciplines, so that's what, one of the things that makes this project really interesting. So we have nutrition students, architecture, engineering, environmental studies, urban planning, and even business students are, are attracted to urban agriculture for a lot of reasons. So it's, that's one of the things that makes it really fun. We do a 10-week ecological market garden program and uh, it's a 10-week program that starts in the spring and the idea is that the participants um, get to see the farm from like the very beginnings in the like pre-greenhouse even up until planting out in the field so it takes place from mid-March to the end of May so we're actually in the last two weeks of that right now and so that that course involves um, a field session for kind of hands-on experiential learning which we think is really key to learning about farming um, and also a classroom session to complement the training in the field to do a bit more of the technical background. I've always been into sort of gardening. I have a pretty large uh, lot um, out in Scarborough so I used to do it a little bit with my dad and then as I got older I still enjoyed doing it and then I started looking around Ryerson to see uh, if there were any opportunities and we actually have a farm so I was like okay we need I need to get involved with that and uh, I started off with the uh, training program and I've learned so much from it and it's actually made me way more interested in science and I've never taken science in high school and now I'm back in high school because I want to like I want to build it up and see where it goes. Rooftop farming companies that aim to to build a, a farm on an existing roof usually source older industrial buildings in maybe in an industrial neighborhood. Older buildings that were built before the 1950s tend to have the load bearing capacity to support the extra weight of a rooftop farm. Here in Toronto, we have a green roof bylaw. So all new buildings that are over a certain size have to include a green roof. So that means that green roofs are now part of our urban infrastructure in Toronto. So people are asking the question, are we gonna see more food being grown on roofs now that it's part of the infrastructure of our buildings? And I do believe that rooftop farming could be a viable option for producing food for the local community. It's, it's expensive and it takes a lot of organization to make a rooftop a place where food can be grown. But the added value is that people get to spend time on the farm and participate in growing the food that they eat and learn how to grow food. So even, even the small impact that we're making in producing food in the city could have huge repercussions because people have backyards and the balconies and their own roofs where they're taking what they learn here and trying it somewhere else. And we have people come visit from other universities who want to replicate the project 
when people stand on the farm and look out at the cityscape, they, they start to see roofs and they go, well, what about that roof? Could we be growing food on that roof? So I do believe that this project could be replicated and we're doing a really thorough job of writing down everything we do so that we can share some of what we're learning here about what grows best and how to manage a rooftop farm. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We post a new video every single week about people trying all sorts of different alternative lifestyles.